Hey everybody, welcome to Go For Green Day. Uh, my name is Daniel, and I'm not on the homestead today. Uh, as you can tell, I'm right beside a creek. This is a creek, but it's not a creek because of all the flooding we have. Uh, it actually is a danger zone right now at the moment. And that's kind of like what I want to talk to you about. Uh, danger, no danger, that kind of thing about the coronavirus. What it means as a homesteader with the coronavirus. Now naturally, uh, homesteaders, they, we don't go out in public as much. We do go out in public, uh, but we don't go out as much. So it's a little bit uh, different for us to, to uh, you know, it it's, just makes our risk a little bit lower of getting uh, the flu or, or anything like that. Because personally, I haven't been sick in, probably uh, 10 years. I get a little bit of vertigo every now and again. That's just because I sleep and my head will tilt back and I get vertigo. <laughs> uh, I'm sure there's other people in the world that had that, had, that, had that problem too. But anyway, back to the coronavirus. You know, I, I am aware of the coronavirus and I am aware of the threat of the coronavirus. And I know it's only killing 2% of the people who catch it. And now, now, how does this really affect me as a homesteader and, and the coronavirus? Now, me personally, I, I have limited access to the outside world. I mean, I hardly have any visitors come to, uh, come to visit the homestead, especially this time of year in the middle of winter, and there ain't much growing. Uh, I hardly go out. I mean, I lost everything in the fire, so I don't have all the food that I would need. But I could order it offline, and it seemed like a smart thing to do. And, you know, kind of protect myself by limiting my, my leaving. And if I do leave, you know, me and Anna, we, we'll wear our mask and gloves. And it's kind of interesting to walk around Walmart with a mask on and, and our gloves. I mean, people naturally avoid you because they think you're sick so and you know me I'm kind of a rebel anyway so I'll just walk around there trucking around with my mask on <laughs> hey I gotta do it <laughs> there was even a, a person in in Walmart that said to me uh, so y'all trying to keep the get from getting this coronavirus right and I was like absolutely that's exactly why we're wearing this but it's also the flu too you know the flu's going around it's pretty bad <laughs> there's kind of an epidemic of the flu right now anyway so you know me and Anna don't want to be sick you know laid out for however long the flu passes I haven't, I haven't been sick in probably 10 years you know so I definitely don't want to catch the flu now you know so I don't want to be laid out and sick so uh, and I don't want to catch this coronavirus because if there is a balloon in, in my area you know, people can walk around for, with it for 21 days and not know it. And it is airborne, so you can catch it just by walking by somebody and if they cough or something like that, you know, then you'll carry it around for 21 days, up to 21 days, and you can spread it around. Uh, example, like this river. If you knew it was going to flood like this, and you see how flooded it is, and you had a house right here, wouldn't you prepare a little bit? It, it, it just makes sense to me that we know it's coming. We've had plenty of advanced warnings, and uh, I'm, I'm, you know, it's like wearing a helmet <laughs> when you ride a motorcycle. If, if your state doesn't have a law, but you still wear a helmet, I, I don't see the harm in limiting your access and to you know, putting a little bit of food up, you know, preparing just a little bit, you know, just in case there is a bloom in your town and you have to self-quarantine just for a little, a little bit of time. I think it's prudent and I think it's smart to do that. And as a homesteader, that's kind of what we do anyway because we're always working. <laughs> There's never a shortage of work, you know, so we're always working, we're always trying to do new project we're always trying to help as many people as we can help 
I don't think uh, it's only killing two percent of people, you know, that, that that catch it, you know, and that's not a bad percentage, you know, and and it's you know people with health problems anyway. Uh, but they, there are seven thousand people in the United States that have been asked to self quarantine. So that's a, that's a a high number to me. To that, and it and it's makes me want to take a little more precautions as far as my family is concerned. And that's why I'm sharing this video so so that y'all can think about this, you know, and think about, well, should I take a few extra precautions? Should I get a few weeks food, you know, stored up in the house? Rice and beans. <laughs> should I plant a garden this year? Should I buy some seeds now? Should I buy things that are available now? You know, just in case there is a balloon here. In, in the United States, you know, so, but they're trying to keep it under control. And, and I hope they do. You know, I hope that they can keep all this under control. And, you know, so there's not a, a major threat in the United States. But as far as being a homesteader in this coronavirus, we're, we're kind of secluded anyway. So it's not a biggest threat to us. I mean, if there is a bloom, I'm definitely not going to let people come and visit. <laughs> we'll just stay put. We'll we'll work. We'll we'll garden. We'll we'll keep doing what we've been doing. We keep practicing the same things that we've been practicing. You know, self reliance. All right, guys. I love you, and I'll catch you on the next video. Honey, over at Ocha. I love you, you do. Later, guys. I'm gonna let y'all watch the river a little bit, so the next 30 seconds or so will just be the river. It's nice and calm and soothing right now. And I and I know y'all enjoy it. <laughs>